You had to make a prediction. Brandon Allen or Josh Dobbs, who plays better tonight? Ooh, that's a good one. I'm going to go with Dobby. I'm going to take Dobby, but it's going to be interesting. Hope both these guys go out and play well. They need to. Well, they call him the passer not for a reason. We've got balls flying all around. I almost take, take you out, Matt. I know. You, you I, I needed a fullback I to pass you, baby. All right. Hey, thanks so much for joining us here on the pregame show. Immediately following the game, we have fifth quarter with all the breakdown, the highlights, and the reaction from the Niners. For Lorenzo Neal, Vern Glenn, I'm Matt Lively. Thanks so much and enjoy the game. And welcome inside the broadcast booth. Another year of Niners preseason football. Greg Papa, Tim Ryan. We've been together now for our six years. This is year number six. The first five, four trips to the NFC Championship game. Two trips to the Super Bowl. Tim, we're looking for one more in 24. One more victory. One more in 24. I like that. The fun run for the gold ring. Not the silver ring. The gold ring oh, starts nice. here in the preseason today. So excited. And the big battle tonight, since Brock Purdy's not going to play, the all-important backup quarterback. It is the battle to be Brock's backup. We are going to see two veterans, Brandon Allen, who was a backup last year, along with Sam Darnold. He'll work the first half. And the new guy from the state of Tennessee, he's a former volunteer, Josh Dobbs, will work the second half. Well, I, I, Bob, I don't think there's any question that the biggest question with this loaded offense is who is QB2? Um, Brandon Allen will start the game tonight and play most of the first half. Josh Dobbs will come in in the second half and, and I assume play most of the second half. Both players have had very similar career paths. Both have played for seven years. This is year eight. Both have been on five teams. Both have had less than 15 starts. For Brandon Allen, I, I, I think clearly to me from watching training camp, he has been the lead dog in terms of getting that number two spot. He has a great feel for the system, has made some big time throws in camp, has got an underrated arm. For Joshua Dobbs, I think, as I've watched him in training camp and through the OTAs, he is clearly a smart guy. He's done a good job of picking up the scheme um, and showed last year in 12 starts, both with Arizona and Minnesota, he is a capable playmaker. I think what the coaches want to see is which guy can consistently diagnose, read the coverage, and deliver the football on time with accuracy. And over on the defensive side, the big news, a new defensive coordinator, Nick Sorensen, will call plays tonight. Well, I am fired up for Nick. He Look, he, this defense, 49er fans have been blessed to watch really good defense over the last five seasons. Um, but to be real, the last four or five games and in the playoffs, they were not a dominant defense. So Nick Sorensen, a change was made, and, and he was hired to be the defensive coordinator. Again, great feel of the system, coaching all those years with the Seattle Seahawks. Year three with him, and based on what I've seen in training camp, um, he is going to be just fine. I'm excited for him. Talked to him before the game. Um, with those added players up front and on the back end, I think sky's the limit. We are going to kick off the Niners 2024 preseason in moments. This dynamic kickoff rule. I got to get a lot of explaining from Vern Glendon to make me understand what it's going to be. Vern, what's hey, going fellas, on Hey, I can't there? wait to see the start of this because we get the chance to see the new way that the league wants to kick these things off. New look for two primary reasons. Number one, player safety, avoid the violent collisions. And number two, ramp up more action. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. By dropping it into that, that drop zone, you get fans engaged in this. 80% of the kickoffs last season were touchbacks. Kind of boring. So let's get fans into it with this new drop zone coverage. And what if the kick returner breaks through that first line of coverage? That would be electric, fellas. Well, it would be, and here's some of the rules. We are going to kick it off from the 35-yard line, Vern. The kicking team no longer starts with the kicker at the 35, T-Rock, and has the run-up. They're already on the other side of the field on the 40-yard line. The kick, the, the, the uh, receiving team, kickoff receiving team, is just five yards away. And here's the key thing. Players cannot move with the exception of the guy kicking off and the two potential returners on the kickoff return team. They can't move until the ball hits the ground or it touches a player. So a lot uh, of It's going to be the wild, the wild NFL. west. It's, it's, it's going to be crazy. None of these players have ever done it. None of the coaches have ever coached it. It's going to look strange to the viewer. Uh, I think the goal of the NFL, and, and Vern talked about all the you know, high-speed collisions that you're not going to be able to get really with just that five-yard buffer zone. I think the, the ambition of the NFL is to have 30-plus percentage. 35-yard line is kickoff coverage team waiting on the 9 or 40. They're going to block on the 35. It is Trent Taylor 
and Ronnie Bell are back to return this kick and they're doing it inside the 10 yard line. You can put one back or you can choose to put two back. The landing zone is inside the 20. Now they can go. Ronnie Bell will get out across the 20 yard line and get out to around the 25. Yard line. See what happens when the season starts with, with Ricky Kersall and, and his injury, but um, they are going to need a, a certainly going to need to lock in a returner here in the preseason. Trent okay. Taylor is up for that job. Will be 31 year old Brandon Allen played in Denver and Cincinnati the last uh, three previous years before joining the 49ers in a backup role. J.P. Mason from the state of Tennessee the back of blitz comes and they hit Brandon Allen. Second down 10 here is J.P. Mason grew up around uh, 29 miles away from here. And that's what he does. He just like breaks tackles and has a Niner first down out near the 40 yard line. Let's check out the starting lineup for the 49ers brought to you by Levi's. It will be J.P. Mason who will get a couple of carries tonight to open the game. A lot of Cody Schrader, Brandon Willis, Brayden Willis will be in there. Eric Sauber a good in line blocking tight end. It will be Ronnie Bell, the veteran Chris Conley at receiver. Jalen Moore. He is not out there. Looks like Chris Hubbard did. At left tackle. Yeah, he was a Titan a year ago. Jalen Moore was not feeling well this morning. He was going to play. Here's a pre snap Black penalty. And uh, what was going to be a toss sweep going to J.P. Mason, a false start false on the start. Niners. Offense, number 68. Five yard penalty. First down. Brad Allen is our referee tonight, T Rock. There's Colton McKivitz just jumps the gun. Trying to starting roll out Marlon right, Davidson. Right I, tackle tonight. Dominic Pooney is making the start at right guard. Very excited about him. Third round pick out of Kansas. He he is arguably one of the top guards already. And he has been in that starting position really from the start of camp with some of the injuries to the offensive guards and Feliciano and Burford. First and 15 here's Saubert. And he's back to the original line of scrimmage. Eric Saubert is a tremendous blocking tight end. We are going to talk to George Kittle coming up in the third quarter. Charlie Warner and Ross Dwelly are both at Atlanta Falcons. So who's going to be in the tight end room behind George this year? Yeah, well, I, I think right there you see a, an illustration of who I think it's going to be in Eric Saubert. He is gritty. He is dirty. He's played a lot of football, and that's what he can do right there. Let Braden Willis run off some coverage in the zone. He'll sit right underneath it for the completion. Second down nine. Right through the hands of J.P. Mason. That ball was humming right there. And a little high. One of the stories in the offseason is that J.P. does spend his offseason about 30 miles away. Bought a jugs gun in the offseason to try to catch the ball. He has been catching the ball better. A little high and a little hot, but catchable. There's no doubt he's been catching the ball better. He is reignited here in, in, in year number three in terms of his work ethic. and. Just watching him every day pre-practice and all the stuff he does. He's ready for a big year. Third down and nine. 49ers have three eligibles to the right and one left. And that is caught for the first down by Ronnie Bell in the Tennessee Territory across the 40-yard line. Found a soft spot in their zone and Brandon Allen hit him on third and long. Well, clutch, but comes down with a big first down on third and long. And there's a handoff to J.P. Mason coming straight ahead and a good run again across the 35 up to around the 32 yard line. Nick Zickel is making the start at center tonight. And has really mostly been a, a guard here with the 49ers when you talk about Zickel. But they run the power play right here and they just pull Aaron Banks out and, and get Brayton Willis behind him. Look at Saubert right there taking Jack Gibbons the linebacker and putting him on his back. You like that five six yards on the power run game. Chris Conley has been playing a lot of X wide receiver without Brandon Ayuk second down. Allen to Conley for the first down inside the 20 yard line. Nice job by Brandon Allen stepping up in the pocket. Some pressure was coming off to his left. He's going to come here around Hubbard. Watch him step up. Elude the, the rusher inside Marlon Davidson and again fire it. Right on time to Chris Conley in year number 10. That was a full body throw right there from Brandon Allen. He's Good got job. a big time arm. I think most observers feel Josh Dobbs has a stronger arm. Talking to quarterback coach Brian Greasy before the game, he thinks that Allen has the stronger arm of the two. Mason going to cut back inside and take it down to the eight yard line. Right, that's good vision by 
J.P. Mason because it looked like they were going to have the edge for him to get it outside. But a good job by the defense sifting over the top. He's able to feel it, jump right in behind Sobert and Willis and pick up positive yards. Good job. 49ers are inside the Toyota red zone here. Very impressive opening drive engineered by Allen. And Mason will take it down to just a little bit short. It'll be third down about one coming up. You're going to sit in shell coverage against a, a two tight end personnel grouping for the 49ers. You're just asking for a run game. That's exactly what happened. J.P. Mason again getting him in here to a third and short. Ordinarily we'd say at this stage what is Kyle Shanahan calling into the speaker helmet of the quarterback but Kyle for the first time in 148 games coaching preseason regular season postseason as a head coach is not not calling plays tonight play Kubiak the assistant quarterback coach to Greasy is calling plays and he's going to call a power run to J.P. Mason first and goal 49ers inside the five yard line. That's 225 pounds of desire right there for J.P. Mason. A little shotgun run. He stunk the front up front. Saubert does just enough as he's pulling around leading the way. Aaron Banks does a good job. And there's contact near the line of scrimmage, but J.P. Mason just bulldozes for the first down. New set of downs here inside the five. Well, this will line up as a in-line fullback here in the true eye. Ustrak not going to play tonight. No Christian McCaffrey tonight with a calf strain. No Elijah Mitchell with a hamstring strain. A lot of J.P. Mason. And he's going to take it down to the goal line. And Pooney will push him in the end zone. The Pooney push. Wow, what a drive by J.P. Mason. Returning to Nashville. Uh, we, we saw already a couple of times pulling Banks from the left guard. This time they pull Pooney, the rookie third-round pick from the right guard position. And he gets out in front. You'll see him coming right into the screen right there. Stunting linebacker. He's able to get him walled off and then goes and gives the assist on J.P. Mason. Good block by Hubbard. Good block by Saubert. You love the way those guys finish in their blocks up front on the O-line and at the tight end position. Now you didn't have Kyle Shanahan calling plays or Brock Purdy a quarterback. You had Clay Kubiak and Brandon Allen, but it looked like the Niners offense and it looks like Jake Moody who made his first 60 PATs during the regular season is the best special teams player in football. Nobody can move to the ball is touched. And it will be taken here by Karis Jackson. Runs around Jalen Graham and Willis and spins out to the 40. All the way to midfield he may go. Jalen Graham's got an angle on him, so sloppy tackling there. And the first kickoff coverage assignment of the new dynamic kickoff rule. It's got to be that I have not seen any returns like that so far in the preseason. I told you watch on and save a touchdown. Harris Jackson, a second-year wide receiver out of Georgia. Will Levis, the young quarterback out of Kentucky, with a very strong arm and a big, powerful body. Sideline interference on the San Francisco coaching staff. That penalty is a mission from the end of the play. First down, Tennessee. Somebody came off the sideline again the way they did last year in Jacksonville. Well, that'll add five more yards to the kickoff. And the... Titans are already inside the red zone on the 49 or 15 yard line. Yatir Gross Matos is starting at left defensive end over the right tackle. The new Niner on the defensive line. This is Tony Pollard. They line up in a pistol. A former Cowboy from Memphis in the University of Memphis. Running right in the middle of the 49er defensive line. There's Levis at 6'4", 230. Started nine games last year. Oh, he's got a big time arm. He's going to play about as fast as he did. They developed Burrow in Cincinnati, but is he the franchise guy? Brian Callahan, the offensive coordinator with the Bengals the last five years from De La Salle. Tajay Spears gets the edge, but nicely run down there by Jair Brown. 49ers safety coming from the third level to make that play as we look at the 49er defensive lineup brought to you by Levi's. Gross Matos, the headliner on the front, but keep an eye on the second year end, Beal Jr. Or is he fast? Curtis Robinson will be the middle linebacker, Tim, flanked by the young guys, Winters and Graham. Bernardo Green will start tonight. We already saw Jair Brown make a play. Third down and four. Uh, 
Tony Pollard flashes open, spins off a grain, and he's got a Tennessee first down. Down inside the five-yard line. He can catch the ball out of the backfield. I'm sure can. Thousand-yard back the last two years. Winters, who runs a 4-4-9. No, First and goal, the quarterback can really run. He's big. They're going to give it to Pollard. And nicely filled there by the 49ers. Stepping up from the safety spot is George Odom. Yeah, right behind Curtis Lofton, and that's how it should work. Lofton starting at middle linebacker. He's he, you know he's been around here for I think this is year three for for Curtis, and he does a good job of just sifting back to this cutback and being right there in the hole to knock it out for a minimal gain. And Curtis Robinson's going to wear the green dot tonight. The fourth year linebacker out of Stanford, very good on special teams, and he's getting the call from Nick Sorensen, who was calling defenses for the first time in the NFL. Kelvin Ridley with a fade route against Rakia Sin. And no flag came down. Good coverage there by Rakia. Yeah, don't let Rakia get his hands on you because you're going to get rocked. He is very good in terms of getting up there in cornerback room, which is deep as I've seen it since I've been here. He's a former Colt, a former Raider, and a former Raven. Third down and goal. Ravis can run. He's going to get chased out of there by Givens. He gets hit hard on the goal line and he spun out of there. What a hit by D. Winters. Flag down on the play. The flag is in the end zone with the Niners holding in the end zone. Well, that'll give oh, the Titans a first down. Ambry will come off the field as Nick Sorensen will go to his goal line defense here. Well, the ambition for Nick Sorensen when you're playing red zone defense, number one takeaway, number two, force a field goal, and they had him on the field goal, but Ambry had a violation with the defensive hold. Quarterback sneak, and he's a big quarterback at 230 pounds. Takes it right down to the goal line. Did not get in, though. Now they give him the touchdown late as they unpile. Well, the Titans answer the Niner touchdown with one of their own, but it was set up on very sloppy kickoff coverage on the first new kickoff the Niners have executed. Back. He gets down to the goal line, Tim. He will take a hit. Please reset the game clock to 6.05. 6.05 on the game clock, please. And they added it 5.57, Thank you. so they'll move it to 6.05. Brad Allen's been a referee in the NFL of Whitehead since 2014. Nick Folk, one of the best kickers in football. Three years in Dallas, seven with the Jets, a year in Tampa, four years in New York with the Giants, and now a second year in Tennessee. Last year, he made 29 of 30 field goals. Just sneaks that in the right upright, and Will Levis leads them right down the field with a 49. And it will be Taylor with Bell out to block. Taylor, a very good punt returner, left the Niners for three years, went to the Bengals. But he can also return kickoffs, and he's a great slot wide receiver. Yeah, he's very quick and 0 to 16 yards from the line of scrimmage, what we like to call level one or two in the passing game. I'm already going to tell you right now with this return, as it is with the with the zone running play on, and then cut back and try to find a crease. And J.P. Mason is done for the night, so here is the undrafted rookie out of Missouri, Cody Schrader. At running back, not a big guy, 5'8", but really impressive. Keep game to Willis, little high there from Brandon Allen. Elijah Molden, the safety, was right in his face, which forced the high throw. Yeah, they work this drill all the time in practice, and, and 100 times at practice, and Brandon Allen will want that one back. That is the signature play of the 49er offense. The uh, stretch and the keep game, the boot game off of it. This is a straight drop and a throw to Chris Conley. And he's out across the 35 up to the 40-yard line close to a first down. Nice route by Conley again. Good route and, and a good throw and, and really well. Here, Trader runs into a wall. I think the beauty of, of Chris Conley is he can still really run in year number 10. Ran 4-3 when he came out. And he still has a lot of gas in the tank. And I think when you want to keep that you know, fifth or sixth wide receiver, Conley is, is in year 10, he's very good on special teams, which is, is rare for a wideout. 
been in the league that long. And he's a great gunner. He had two great downs in the Super Bowl last year. Here's Cody Schrader out of the backfield on the check down. Excited to watch him play tonight. Well, his numbers in college, four years at Truman State, a D2 school. In 2021, Tim, he ran for over 2,000 yards, scored 25 touchdowns, and you're thinking, oh, D2. Then he goes to Missouri, and they're on third down and nine if they bring pressure. Allen picked up a couple of third downs on the first touchdown drive. Tried to hit Trent Taylor. The flag came in at the end of the play. Did they hold Taylor on that? They know each other well. Brandon Allen and Trent Taylor were teammates in Cincinnati. I think it would be against the Titans here, either. A An eligible player downfield. Oh, Offense, that. Number 63. The penalty is declined. Brings up fourth down. It's on the center, Nick Zakel. When you have the quarterback rolled out like that, the linemen get downfield too much. Completion, but down the field. So the Niners will punt the ball. Mitch Wisnowski's not going to punt tonight. Tabor Pepper still the long snapper. Mitch has a knee irritation. So big Presley harder than all 255 pounds of him. The former Steeler is going to punt this ball, and it's a good punt. Uh oh. And another. Sloppy bit of coverage by the Niners as this one's taken out across the 35 yard line. Jaquan Jackson, a backup wide receiver on the on the return. So Ron I, Schneider's not going to be happy tonight. I think Harvin ended up making the tackle. He's 255 pounds. <laughs> they want to have him kick off with this new kickoff rule. Cowboys are a headliner, but the Kansas City Chiefs are coming in. What a home schedule. Will Levis will stay. At quarterback for Brian Callahan will check it down to Tony Pollard, former Cowboy himself. Good game there by Pollard. They brought Emmett Smith back to Dallas. Missed him. Finding him and took what the defense gave him. Pollard, a five year Dallas Cowboy. Tajay Spears is now in at running back. Derrick Henry, of course, King Henry was the guy here forever. He is now a Baltimore Raven. Second down and four. They give it a Spears. Good penetration there by Winters. Look at D. I told you, if he knows what's coming and he's playing with great anticipation here in year two through training camp, when you watch him, he is going to put the trip and watching back home. He is saying, I told you he was the MVP of the OTAs. He really did flash it his second year. What a play that was. Third down in 10. Sorensen goes with a four man pressure. Levis gets it, checks it down to Calvin Ridley. Got to tackle this guy in space. In the Niner territory with a first down. Looks like Dean Winter is down on the field. Hopefully he's all right. I don't want to see that. that. No. Wow. They're already not going to have Trey Greenlaw to start the year, Tim Ryan, Tim Ryan, after the Achilles tear in the Super Bowl. No, let's hope this isn't serious. It would be catastrophic. Dr. McAdams and the performance staff come on the field. One play after a great. Now we can all breathe a, a sigh of relief, as can the linebacker coach Johnny Holland there for D. Win. Be all right. Johnny Holland was a really good linebacker in the NFL for a long time. One of the best linebacker coaches in football. K.J. Wright, the former Seahawk, is now on the Niner staff assisting Johnny. That was a 22-yard catch and run by Ridley. Now they're going to run Tony Pollard again. Oh, he is a slasher, isn't he? Find that little crease, foot in the ground, north and south for Tony Pollard. Four. Remember, he got hurt in the playoff game a few years ago when Jimmy Ward took him down. Spears and Pollard, a good combination. Again, he slashes off the right side. Pollard will take it all the way inside the 10 yard line. George Ordon will get him on the ground. Well, this is an area when in the back end of the sea trap put his foot in the ground and make a collision with the left guard who's pulling trying to hit him. 24 yard run by Pollard after the 22 yard catch and run by Ridley on third down. Now they're going to screen to Spears. He gets pulled down from behind. Nicely done there by Kevin Givens and others. 49ers defense and they're used to it. They're going to see a whole host and a variety of screens all year long when you talk about their big dog pass rushers coming up field. 
Just five seconds to go in the quarter. Will Levis snap this before the end of the quarter? They're going to fall start here. Radins, the right guard moved. Was he induced to move by a Niner moving on the line? Like T.Y. McGill just flew off the ball. Encroachment. Yeah, it's on T.Y. McGill. After this is the goal. Still second down. Well, you don't want to see that on a, on a. You know, they're twice as upset when your back's against the wall and it's down in the in the red zone. Yeah, he's not happy with this the run is. defense. The end of the first quarter. First quarter started well. The 49ers went right down the field. 74 yards for a touchdown. A touchdown run by.